EA Sports and the PGA Tour proudly present the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today, it's live third-round coverage of the Pittsburgh Invitational. Hello again and welcome. Rich Lerner alongside my friend and colleague, Frank Navala. We are back in the state of Pennsylvania getting set to kick off the round here at one of the great golf courses in the world, Oakmont Country Club. Frank, you're very familiar with it because you were right in the mix down the stretch at the 1994 U.S. Open right here at Oakmont. And Rich, it's so good just to be back here. You know, there's so much history uh, in Oakmont. It's been a host to so many prestigious tournaments in our sports, such as the U.S. Amateur, the U.S. Open, the Women's U.S. Open, and the PGA Championship. It's just one of the true gems on the golf landscape. Oh, that's it. New member of the 300-yard club. Good poke right there. Second shot. That's an absolute beauty. Frank, really good chance from this position to make a birdie. Yeah, really the only thing he's looking at right now is the flag. Uh, this is a green light special. Here's to be what they call a commercial play, very solid. Early part of this back nine and a good approach shot. Now we'll have this for birdie. Now this for birdie came away with par in the previous round. Never quite had enough oomph on that. Yeah, sort of a, a wishy-washy stroke. And getting ready for the putt. Doesn't dig into the lead with that par, but Frank, sometimes, and you know this as well as anyone, you just have to kind of maintain your footing out there. 13th hold is where the action is right now. Let's take you there. Frank, our featured golfer really hasn't been able to get a whole lot going today. Lack spark, lack sizzle out there. Uh, hard to figure out the reason. Golf course was certainly gettable today. Look at the other scores, they're considerably better. A little bit of a head scratcher. This could be good. And it makes the green in regulation. Boy, this could be a tough one right here, Frank. It's a very long putt, Rich. Obviously, it's difficult, uh, but he still has a shot to sink this one for birdie.
Frank, that's what you want to do. Good lag, Pud. Yeah, they can't all go in. These putts keep the round together. Just pushed it. Boy, that hurts. Just a couple of feet. Too bad. That's a bogey and dropping another spot on this leaderboard. 14. Pretty short par for it. 358 yards. Frank? Get the ball in play here and certainly your best opportunity for birdie on the second nine so far. Attention like a little kid at school, Frank. That baby's sitting up. Sitting up? It's got the best view as well. You don't even need binoculars from where that ball is. Now the approach shot coming up to the 14th. Should be pretty good right there on the safe side. Good clean contact and a nice result. And a chance for birdie coming up. Birdie try again here today. Had a nice birdie on this hole yesterday. Good try, just didn't quite read the break, Frank. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem, you'd think, cleaning up here for Pop. Locked in on the read and the speed. Right off the edge, wow. That hurts. This would give him a bogey. That's a bad bogey at a bad time in the tournament. Now you'd like to think it's just a slip on the controller. All teed up at the 15th. It's a par four of 499 yards. good long and straight that's how you do it Frank why are great rivalries so important why do we love them I think because people like to uh, sit on one side of the fence you're either for or against a great player and I think we see that today with Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy there's the McIlroy fans that think his future is so bright there's the Woods fans that still want him to pass Jack Nicklaus's record that's the beauty you've got to have an opinion and you have to have a player What a nice shot. Right on the green and a pretty easy putt on the way. Pretty putt coming up. Had a bogey on this hole yesterday.
This can be a cruel game at times. Well, that hurts. Thought he had it. Bogey here yesterday. Chance to better that today. That is a solid par putt. So through 54 holes, a really good position inside the top five with one round to go. Yeah, and those handful of players that we're looking at, Rich, um, they certainly have looked the best players this week, uh, which makes tomorrow look like a real thriller. EA Sports and the PGA Tour proudly present the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today, it's live final round coverage of the Pittsburgh Invitational. It is one of the most difficult golf courses in the United States, Oakmont Country Club outside Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Hello again and welcome, Rich Lerner, alongside Frank Navalo, who was a part of that dramatic U.S. Open in 1994 at Oakmont, ultimately won by Ernie Els. Frank, when you think of Oakmont, what comes to mind? The difficulty of the golf course, Rich. I know a lot's changed over the last 20 or so years. Uh, a lot of the trees have been removed. But really, that wasn't the story of Oakmont. It's the slick greens, you know, how firm and fast they can be. The members there, for example, um, you know, they marvel at the fact that people think they're fast. They say, we put on these greens every single day, and they're certainly no slower. But it's the bunkering as well. There's 210 bunkers here. They're all in play. And um, it just has that history. When you step on Oakmont, you just know you are walking on not one of the great courses in North America, but one of the great courses in golf. Frank, deep into a final round at a U.S. Open at Oakmont, this approach shot at 15, this is where you really need to be focused. You do. The front third of the screen slopes back towards the front right of the green. Then everything in the middle starts to kick towards the right and then the back. So it's a case, like so many other greens here, of using the slopes in your favor. So pick the right club, try and adjust, and, uh, well, in the back of your mind, allow for the amount of roll that the ball is going to take when it hits the green. Par yesterday, now for birdie. Nudge this one home, finish it up.
Frank, the march is on. Now within touching distance of the leader now. Frank, this is a point in the round where you really need to summon your best stuff. Par three of 231 yards. You know the pressure's building. We're at the 16th hole, and you have a long iron in hand. You can't flinch. You can't take it halfway back and go. This has to be the complete swing, and you have to really have the nerve on this shot. Yeah, this shot has to be hitting right, in the, right out of the button, that's for sure. Um, one thing to consider, though, in the back of your mind, it's always better putting back uphill. Well, uphill is actually from the back of the screen. So you actually can be a little braver on 16 than what you might think standing on that tee, because a little long is better than a little short. In the direction of the sand. It looks like it. Into the tall cabbage. That ball is swallowed up. Second shot coming out of the rough here. From the rough, he manages to not only make the green, but get within easy striking distance of the hole. Settles in over the putt. Good par. Frank, here we are at the 17th. It's only 313 yards. That's par four, by the way. And nowadays, that could be a par three. What's the right way to play this hole, or does it simply depend on where you are in the championship? I think it depends on where you are in the championship. Sometimes people try and hit drivers at drivable par fours. Believe it or not, not necessary to make birdie but it's the easiest option to make four. One of the problems here at 17, if you do lay it up and the flag is on the right side, you turn it into a very, very difficult short par four. And that's the reason why people often try and drive these greens. Oh, this is taken off on a weird line. And it's going to be in the rough, it looks like. Getting set for this next shot from the rough, what does the player need to be careful of here, Frank? Well, this is where we're going to see exactly how good they are because, you know, that's not exactly the best lie, but it's sort of doable if you, if you know what you're doing. That will be a great look at birdie. See if he can go one better than yesterday when he made par. This putt for birdie. So one shot closer to the lead with that birdie. Great finishing hold here at Oakmont, Frank, the 18th. I remember back in 1994, this was the last hole in a U.S. Open ever played by Arnold Palmer. You couldn't pick a better finishing hole to win a championship or we'll say farewell. I like that. That's a good spot right there. Send a cup. 
Frankie's cranking it and banking it. Giant drives, a boatload of birdies. What a round. Yeah, these are the days you just dream for. Um, we know golf's not that easy. But on a day like today, savor it and just keep going. Keep doing it. Well, he's going to have to hit the same club a lot harder or just hit another one. Frank, golf may be the best sport to follow from this standpoint. You can get closer to the great athlete in golf than you can in any other sport. You, you could stand five feet from Tiger Woods at a tee box as he's getting ready to drive. I mean, that's really unusual in sports. Yeah, it's a different type of spectator sport, especially if you, if you follow your favorite player all the way around the golf course. Because it's not like waiting for your favorite hitter in a, in a baseball game. You know, you've got to wait several innings. You can literally see him hit every single shot, drive through to putt. Well, you're not going to make that putt all the time, but you'd like to at least get it to the hole. If he keeps putting like that, he's going to be an announcer in no time. You don't want to let this one get away. This is about concentration and focus at this point. Wow, I thought he made that. Whoa, that was unexplainable. Well, that was easily going to be a pop. Now I'll have to focus. Try to make bogey. Makeable putt right here. He is currently sitting at one under for the round. Continues to putt beautifully. So that'll do it from historic Oakmont Country Club in western Pennsylvania. Frank, Oakmont yet again has stood the test of time. It has. It, uh, it proves it's at the top of the tree with regard to testing every department of a player's game in whatever era they played. So for all of us here at EA Sports, I'm Rich Lerner alongside Frank Navalo saying so long until next time.
EA Sports, in association with the PGA Tour, proudly presents the start of the FedEx Cup playoffs. Today, it's live opening round coverage of the Northeast Invitational. Hello again and welcome. Rich Lerner alongside my colleague Frank Navalo here today calling the action from the cliffs at Lighthouse Point. And Frank, this course features some breathtaking scenery. It certainly does, Rich. Changes of elevation and it's in phenomenal uh, shape. We've got to send our thanks out to the superintendent, Peyton Duncan, who's uh, got the course exactly primed. You should enjoy it. You should enjoy the views. Take your camera as well. This is very scenic up in New England. Moving on to the 12th hole now, par four, 439 yards. Frank, this one's offline. There's rough and thick stuff over there. Pretty good result right there, considering it looked rough all the way. Exactly. Rich. Really did. Chance to set himself up for a good scoring opportunity with his second shot here. There's a bunker over there. I think he's headed for it. A bit unfortunate in the bunker, Frank. Well, it'll be interesting to see what his bunker plays like. Looking to splash this softly onto the green. <laughs> Frank, that reminds you of maybe what, the greatest bunker player of all time? This one just requires a little bit of focus. Still even par for the day. A lot of excitement here. Let's take you out to the action once again at the 13th. As we catch up with today's featured golfer, just been holding steady all day long, Frank. A solid round of golf. Um, four of these. That will certainly uh, bode well come the end of the week. This could be really good, Frank. Oh, straight at it. Excellent start off the tee. That's a great way to begin this hole. Second shot. Frank, really good chance from this position to make a birdie. Yeah, really the only thing he's looking at right now is the flag. Uh, this is a green light special. Good swing, good shot yet again. So a chance for birdie after another solid approach shot. 
It's at sneaky distance. A birdie to send him to one under on the leaderboard. Now to the par 3 14th. It is 240 yards. What a golf course, Frank. I mean, this tests the best in the world. I'm talking about McElroy, Jordan Spieth, and Ricky Fowler. We 700 yard par fives and nearly 600 yard par fours. This is all you want. It certainly is, and that's why the, the total yardage of this golf course is nearly 7,700 yards. This par 3, just a beast at 240 yards. One thing you want to do, though, is avoid Lake Zimmer. It's a big body of water to the right. Um, if anything, though, look at the green. It shapes a little to the right, so you can use that left side of the green, which is away from the lake. That's a smart way to play this. That's good stuff right there. Wonderful approach, and now a really good look at birdie. Frank going for two in a row now. Now sitting at two under par for the tournament. Fifteenth hole and Frank a return to sanity. 387 yards, par four. Yeah, second easiest hole on the golf course. So bends a little to the left. Just avoid the sand left and that little pot bunker on the right. And you should uh, be set up with a relatively short iron in to a, a green that really the only problem is if you go long. Uh, Tom Weisskopf was one of my idols growing up. I loved the way he swung. That swing right there reminds me of my eye. I mean, looks like Rory McIlroy, Frank, sticking the follow through. Well, Frank, as we know, golf is not played generally on a flat surface, and here we go, uphill. Yeah, and the uphill lie is going to guarantee you more loft than normal. So you're going to have to counteract that with uh, maybe an extra club. Seems to like it. Looks like it's headed for the green. Excellent shot to within 10 feet. Locked in on the read and the speed. birdie and no doubt he's feeling pretty good at his position on this leaderboard a series of good holes in a row has got him to this point frank you surprised to see that name on top of the leaderboard i, I am surprised to see the name but not that style of golf leading uh, it was great performance especially tee to green um, you don't often see people start that quickly
EA Sports, in association with the PGA Tour, proudly presents the start of the FedEx Cup playoffs. Today, it's live second round coverage of the Northeast Invitational. Always a pleasure to be along the coast of Maine, Lighthouse Point to be exact. Rich Lerner alongside Frank Novello for EA Sports. Frank, this is sure to be another exciting day of golf out there. What are the challenges facing our players today? The length of the golf course for a start, Rich, this golf course just under 7,700 yards. So it's one of the longest ones you'll play. And of course the cliffs, that's why it's called this, they certainly are in play. There is one double green out there, that's the 10th and the 13th hole, they share the same green. Lots of great design features and you've got it on a prime day in great condition. So, enjoy the round and make sure you feast on the vistas as well. Beautiful display of ball striking today, really in control. And that's another GIR, green in regulation. Birdie here yesterday, trying to do it again today. <laughs> Setting himself up for a good weekend, the Wiley Golf instructor makes his birdie. Rich Lerner back at Lighthouse Point with Frank Nabilo. We're at the 15th hole. Frank, a relatively short par four, 387 yards. Yeah, finally we get one under 400 yards. A little bit of trouble off the tee to be avoided. Bunker left and that little pot bunker on the right. But missed those. And really, this is a uh, very much a scoring opportunity. Frank, you played in conditions all over the world. Here come the winds now. What's the mindset? Well, this is really what separates the men from the boys. This is where you've got to tell yourself that it's an advantage for you. And obviously, the scores will go up a little bit um, given the conditions. But once again, this is going to suit the stronger player today. You like the old phrase, swing easy when it's breezy? Definitely when you're hitting it into a head breeze. But um, if down breeze, tear it up a little bit, try and ride that wind some more. There's a big green, and they're going to use every inch of it. Leaves that one about 20 feet out from the cup. Nicely played shot. And getting ready for the putt. with that birdie moves to third place. A cursory look at the scorecard, Rich, and uh, well, it looks hard at 240 yards, but uh, that elevation is going to chew off quite a bit of yardage off the scorecard. Really, it's a good chance for a birdie on this closing stretch. V-shaped green, as long as you're on the right section of the green, could have a chance for birdie.
Well, too bad, Frank. That one rolled right off the green. It was just coming out so hot. So getting set for a greenside bunker shot, Frank, when I think of the great bunker players in the history of the sport, I think about Gary Player, Seve Ballesteros, who you knew so well. What did they do that made them so effective on these greenside bunker shots? They had an attitude for a start that was different. For them, it was, they saw possibilities. And uh, they, they would imagine the amount of sand. Remember, because this is the only shot in golf where you don't have to hit the ball first. So they would really choose the amount of sand behind the ball, whether that was an inch or two. Aim the club at that and made sure they followed through. Well, this one's sweet, Frank. Super. That ball's run out certainly over 300 yards, Frank. Call it about 310. Right in the heart of the fairway, green light special. We're also seeing more long putters in the game. Yeah, there's a choice. If, uh, if you don't feel comfortable with a normal grip and you've got a few nerve issues, then you can, well, use a longer version, jam it in your chest, have a different fulcrum point. Into the tall cabbage. That ball is swallowed up. Ball sitting down here in the rough. He's digging in. Frank, it's not about getting the ball close to the hole from that spot. Well, he had no chance to get it close. You know, I thought he had very, very, very little chance of getting it on the green. So given that, that was a very good shot. Settle for par here. Settles in over the putt. That is a solid par putt right there. Frank, as we arrive here at 18, I'm thinking about uh, what we so often hear up here in New England. You can't get there from here, or, or can you at this par four finishing hole? Like the looks of this one. Oh, yeah. Not the longest, but not bad. 295 yards in the fairway. We'll settle. Ready for a second shot, trying to knock it on the green. like it's hitting for the bunker. Sometimes he get breaks, and he got one right there. 
Yeah, I guess uh, the bunker was a little smaller than I thought it was. It looked doomed for that. Birdie putt coming up. Had a par on this hole yesterday. So all the scores have been posted for round number two, and look who is on top of the leaderboard, Frank. Yeah, with two very solid rounds of golf, uh, key right now, just stay out of your own way and keep it up. Uh, the pressure will start to build. We know that as you get closer to the end of this tournament.